too funny. I love that. That's just great. That's wonderful. Because <coughs> we have been talking about how everything that's happening right now is here for our benefit to clear out the past so we can move forward clear and free and joyful. Yes, sir? Where did you learn that? Interchange, when's the night? So welcome. Hi. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry I have this really fun nativity up here. I don't know if you awesome. can see it. Is this is just if you get a chance to come see this, this is like adorable. Um, there are people who would think this is really sacrilegious. Oh. <laughs> which I think is even more fun. Because uh, I'm just wicked that way, I don't know. But it's, it's mooses, moose, that are, are portraying the nativity. And you've got a, this little, the little baby Jesus moose. It's a baby, it's a Jesus moose. It's the cutest little thing, has a little sweet little face. It's just adorable. It's just adorable. So it's, and we want to talk, it's, it's the Sunday before Christmas. So I want to, I want to share with you some thoughts about Christmas. Christmas. Uh, and the story of Christmas, um, for those that believe, is very sweet. And whether you believe or not, there's some wonderful metaphorical information that can really be a blessing. Let's start with the star. Um, the star led the wise men uh, to searching for Jesus because they had seen the astrology. Okay, now this is a case for astrology is being way okay. Don't you think? I mean, there's a lot of people, religious, that would tell you, oh, no, that's not good stuff. But I think anything that we can know that helps us understand ourselves a little bit better and helps us um, perceive the world a little more clearly, oh, Bill's a Taurus. Okay, so he's stubborn. I get to understand that. Now I don't have to be angry at him because he is who he is. I get to just learn how to live with that and deal with that. You know, I'm a Virgo. I alphabetize my spices. You know, <laughs> Phil accepts me. Yeah, there's no the problem with this would be not one. Um, but when we know about ourselves and know the characteristics, then this gives us a clue as to who we are and can be a real blessing in our lives. So here was the star floating in, in that sky. And it led the wise men to search out Jesus. Well, you know, they didn't have particulars, you know, stars up in the sky, they're following this thing, it's tracking. Gosh, good grief, wouldn't that have been a wonderful sight to have seen? So they go to the, the king of the land of the time, Herod, and they said, um, well, so where do we find the king, the new king that's being born? And he was very upset as rightfully so, because he didn't want somebody taking over his throne. <clears throat> so his, his whole um, court went and they studied scripture and they finally found, well, he's, he'll be in Nazareth. I'm sorry, Bethlehem. And so that's where the wise men went. Now we have the three gifts that they gave, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But in reality, it probably was a whole caravan of people that, that journeyed from wherever they were, from the east, wherever that was. Probably took them quite a while to get there. <clears throat> so they, the king said, okay, now when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go worship too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Wink wink. wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> so they went and they found Jesus and they gave him the gifts. So the symbolism of the star, let's just do the symbolism as we're going here. The symbolism of the star has to do with hope. Hope of something better. At the time when Jesus was born, the, the Jewish um, 
faith, the, the, the religious aspect of that faith, I was pretty corrupt. Instead of offering blessings, you know, you, everything was sacrificed. They had to do <coughs> sacrifices throughout for everything. Um, <clears throat> and you could bribe the high priest. Uh, and they were so corrupt that if you brought a dove to, to be sacrificed, they could say, oh, that's not good enough. You have to go buy one of ours. You know, I mean, it's just a racket. And, and there wasn't this loving connection between divine source, God, and the hu human regular people. It was this corrupt system that people who were pretty discouraged, given up about. So the star is a star of hope. It gets to be different. It gets to be different. How wonderful. I don't know about you, but to wake up in the morning and know it gets to be different is huge. Because you know what? I don't have to make the same stupid mistake I did yesterday. I could do it differently. I could do it differently. And maybe I have a better awareness today than I did yesterday. And so having the star of hope is just a really beautiful thing. So then they arrive. Um, the shepherds, now, see the story of the magi are in Matthew, but the story of the shepherds are in Luke, if I have my facts straight. And, you know, my head is just not on straight most of the time. So, yeah, the magi were in Matthew, um, but the story of the shepherds were in, in Luke. So, <clears throat> the magi went to where Jesus was staying, so he was already in a house, but the shepherds saw him when he was in the manger. So even though Matthew has it kind of, we, we read Matthew first, it's first in the New Testament. It's not necessarily in chronological order. So really what happened is the shepherds found out about it first. Now how cool is this? That the angels appeared, not to the king, not to the wealthy, but to the guys doing the night shift. And you know what does that speak to us? That speaks to us that just doing the deal, doing what, what we have in our hearts to do, doing the work that's necessary to do, is of great value. It's of great value. If you're working the night shift, you are in a wonderful class of people that were the first to hear the good news. How cool is that? How cool is that? And the angels that came, now there were a herald angels, not herald as in H-A-R-O-L-D, the name herald. That's not their name. They're herald, H-E-R-A-L-D, like the Tri-City Herald. They're here to announce the good news. So there's two kinds of angels here at the birth. Um, the, the angel that came to herald or to tell us the good news. Hey, there's a kid here, and he's going to make it different. It gets to be different from here on. Don't ha doesn't have to be the same old, same old. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was hanging around, sleeping, watching the sheep sleep, I mean, that's got to be like quite an exciting job, don't you think? And all of a sudden, the heavens open up, and it's bright light, and an angel is talking to you, I might be a little, like, distressed. <laughs> and so the first thing the angel says is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's all good. Don't be afraid. For look, I have good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And it says, he'll be in a manger, go look. And as soon as he's finished talking, then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. How cool is that? So then you have, you have the angel that comes and says, look out you guys, there's a there's a baby, you need to go take a look at that. And then the chorus of angels <coughs> singing glory to God. So you've got 
you've got all this excitement. Are you going to stay and hang out with a sheep or are you going to go check it out? <laughs> they immediately left and went to check it out. So the two angels that are here are the angels, the angel of um, the herald who announced it, um, which is, uh, we could refer to that as an, an angel of announcement. Um, and then the angels of glory, which, which say glory to God. Because he is well pleased with humanity. This was before Jesus died and was the Savior. This was before we had an opportunity to make a choice to either follow or not follow, whatever. This is because you exist. You exist. You breathe. You took on the breath of life when you were born. You chose in. God's pleased with that. Everything else is gravy. Everything else is gravy. Give up trying to be perfect. It's not expected of you. Because the things that hold us back in life are regret, anger, and fear. Fear comes from the unknown. We don't know what we're doing or we feel like we should know or, or, or we feel like we're out of control. Anger comes when it's not going the way I think it should. And regret comes from when we make a choice and have that V8 moment. <sighs> Could have done it differently. But if we get on the path, like Sandra and William were talking about, get right back on the path, how wonderful is that? And here's this innocent child who is a gift, best Christmas gift ever, because here's this innocence that lasted his whole life. He never had to have a regret because his choices were always the right choice. Not made out of his own self-worth or self-glory or pay attention to me or some wound that he received because somebody didn't treat him right, so he was like the stepson, so you know, maybe he's not good enough. No, he always made the right choice. Even if he had hurt in his life, he still made the right choices. Why? Because his father said, I love these guys. I love these guys. I delight in them. I'm happy. I want them to have peace. And as we've talked before about peace, peace is the combination of forgiveness and compassion. So if you want to have peace on earth, have forgiveness and compassion for yourself and other people. You know, I think it's easier to forgive somebody else. It's harder to forgive ourselves. It's harder to do that. Especially when regret just rears its ugly head and says, you're not good enough. Because then it triggers all that other stuff. And you don't have somebody to feed off of and say, mm, you know, let me hold sacred ground for you while you go through that trauma. <laughs> it's about love. And love came to us in innocence. And every time we have an opportunity to reclaim our innocence, we reconnect in this divine moment with the angels of glory and the angel of announcement. Good news. So here's something I want to throw out at you. Next time you have a yard sale, ask the angel of announcement to get the word out for you. <laughs> next, we, next time we have our, our expo, let's have the angel of announcement work with us to get the word out. And let's also ask the angel, angels of glory to help our hearts sing and to move, move beyond fear into that joyful presence within. So symbolically, there's lots of things here. Back to the, the wise men, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold represents value, worth. So by bringing that gold to the, the Christ child, this is symbolic of spirit, God, higher power, whatever there is for you, wanting you to know you have value. I value frankincense. Now, frankincense and myrrh, I get them mixed up, so I apologize. Uh, frankincense is, is a very healing, um, 
antibiotic oil. Um, and myrrh is a, an antiseptic, if I understand that correctly. So they had great value. Uh, myrrh is also used in, in, in embalming and some other things. Um, but these were very priceless uh, spices that, were, that had value. They didn't have antibiotics in those days. So the spices that were given helped ensure this child's life. Money so that they could have, they could journey um, and, and be okay. And then these oils were here to help this child fight off infection and, and survive. The, the survival rate of children in those days was not good. Not good. So then an angel came, probably an angel of announcement, came to the wise men and said, you know, don't go back to the king. Just go on your way. Go the other way. Go the back way home. Um, because they, they knew that the, the king had ill will for that child. So it was about two years later <coughs> that uh, the king decided, well, those wise men never came back. I think I better take matters into my own hands. So then he went um, and ordered that all children under the age of two all male children under the age of two were killed. So there's that two-year time frame that we can assume is it happened, unless it was a year and he just guessed an extra just to make sure everything was taken care of. But in the middle of the night, Joseph got another, got another message, an angelic directive in his sleep, and said, uh, you need to go to Egypt to save yourself and this child and his mother. And they immediately did that. Uh, don't you love the immediately part? I'm not an immediately kind of girl. <laughs> you know, I might get a suggestion from angels, and I go, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> and I do. And then the psychic V8 moment, so I could have done it sooner, and it would have been so much easier if I had. So it's that immediately thing, because we don't, we don't trust it. Why don't we trust it? Because we haven't learned to trust that inner twitchy thing. Yours hits you here, mine hits me in the heart space. Oh, I'll get that. And it's not okay. You know, when everything's feeling okay, it feels really good, everything's good. And then you know how when somebody tells you a lie and you go, eh, on the inside? That's your not okay. And when you learn to trust that not okay, then you also learn to trust the okay, the all good sign. And when you get a directive in your, in your sleep or a friend says something and you get a ring true on it, wherever that hits you in your body, sometimes back of the head too. <laughs> However you receive that, immediately take action. Immediately take action. Because we don't, because we have that fear thing. Oh, I don't, I don't know never done it that way before. Like, I'm doing it perfectly now. <laughs> so, what else do I want to share with you? I want to share with you one last little thought. When the angel said, peace on earth, and we have you know, we have created this phrase, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. That goodwill towards men is this, God is pleased with us. Good, God has this goodwill towards us. So again, this is an angelic directive of if you want peace in your life, acquire goodwill for others. Now in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, Christopher Sunday, next Sunday. And then we're going to have our dream board workshop. Say what? Yay. Yay. <laughs> In thinking about your dream boards, this is, this is how you're manifesting in your life, what you want to manifest in your life. Everything that you have right now is a result of everything you've manifested up till here. If you like it, keep doing the same stuff. If you don't like it, we get to do it differently. Because some of the things that we've been doing have been out of anger, fear, or regret.
So let's shift that and start acting out of love, this expression of love. Remember that money is energetically void. You know, and sometimes in your manifesting, oh, let me write my check for a million dollars. Money is energetically void. What would you do with it? What do you want to do? What do you want to do, be, or have? That's, that's what manifesting is about. Now, sometimes I have people say, I'll give as soon as God gives me something. You know, it just doesn't quite work that way. Can you see there's something amiss in that thinking? Because even if we have very little, we have faith. And you can give from that faith. You can give goodwill that has been gifted to you freely. Didn't earn it. It was a gift. Symbolic in this situation, symbolic in this story. Ding, ding, yes. There's a little confirmation. So giving the gift of goodwill, when you give, more comes in. So gifting is really important. In a few minutes, we have our giveaway ceremony. Whether you brought something or not, you're welcome to stay and participate as far as being an observer. So maybe we'll do this next time next year <clears throat> in this giveaway ceremony it's giving from your heart something that has value to you and then you'll be given an opportunity to select something that somebody else has brought and then hear the story of why it has value for them very very fun stuff very interesting thing so I hope you get a chance to come up and see the little Christmas mooses so I wish you a very very Merry Christmas <laughs> Let's do a little guided meditation, shall we? <laughs>